50 years after it first opened, a $4.3 million renovation of the legendary Capricorn Sound Studios in Macon, almost complete. Mercer University will reopen it with a dedication December 3rd. The opening will also include a concert. Capricorn is the little studio that brought the world southern rock, including the Allman Brothers Band. Tonight, we're taking a closer look in our new series entitled Where We Live, sharing stories about Georgia that you may not know. Greg Allman uh, told our president the year before he died, he was on campus, we were giving him an honorary doctorate, and he told our president before the ceremony, when he, our president was telling about what we're going to do with Capricorn, he said, don't change a thing in that room, it's perfect. And so we have, uh, we have followed that uh, directive. The original studio was purchased by the late legendary Phil Walden, a Mercer alumnus, along with his brother Alan Walden, Frank Fenter, and the immortal Otis Redding in 1967. Redding's death in a plane crash changed the trajectory of the record label and music history. The studio opened 24 months later in 1969 when the Allman Brothers were anchored in Macon. I met Phil Walden at the Fillmore sure. East. Yeah. Phil was... Uh, the founder uh, of Capricorn. Yes. He was starting a record company and um, wanted me to come down. He said, let me fly you down to Macon and, you know, we'll put you up in the Hilton Hotel and you'll come into the office, see if you like it. Photographer extraordinaire and longtime Atlanta resident Herb Cossover liked it. He was friends with Phil and the Allman Brothers Band for decades. Mr. Cossover knew all the southern bands of Capricorn and the groups were recorded in the famed studios. Allman Brothers, Marshall Tucker Bandy, and Elvin Bishop, to name a few. Capricorn represented more than remarkable music. It also intersected with politics, lifting a former Georgia governor to Washington, D.C. We've got an exhibit there about Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter has said he wouldn't have been elected president of the United States without Capricorn. President Carter had a relationship with Phil Walden, who also managed the Allman Brothers Band in addition to running Capricorn. He invited the Southern Rock Bands to the Georgia governor's mansion to play. During the 1976 presidential campaign, Governor Carter would introduce the Allman Brothers Band at concerts who would in turn raise money for the Democratic candidate. Mr. Cossover told me he remembers Governor Carter and then President Carter at the Capricorn Studios in Macon. He came in the dark room one time when we were shooting and he watched me and at the time you, mm -hmm. you put white paper into a liquid and a picture came up. You know, it was the old days of negatives and he, st he, was, he was right there with a Secret Service guy, when, you know, he was right watching that come up. I said, my God, this... Governor. President Carter's relationship with Greg Allman spanned decades. The Allman Brothers Band played the Carter inaugural in Washington, D.C. At the commencement where we awarded uh, Greg his honorary doctorate, President Carter was there. He's on our board of trustees, and uh, the, they were reunited for the first time in a long time. It was a very emotional reunion, and uh, President Carter helped uh, uh, bestow the honorary degree on Greg Allman, oh, and uh, it was really a special moment. Greg Allman died one year later and is buried near the Capricorn Studios in Macon. He was probably the, uh, the a true white blues singer, maybe the best. By the way, Larry Brumley is with Mercer University. The label went bankrupt in 1979, then resurrected out of Nashville, signing Athens-based widespread panic, Cake, 311, and a young unknown Tennessean named Kenny Chesney. Oh, he did pretty well. He did pretty well. <laughs> He's still doing pretty well. Capricorn relocated to Atlanta, and then they folded in 2000. Capricorn has been repurposed. 2020 and beyond the studio officially will be open for musical groups on january 2nd and you can find more on my where we live stories on my facebook page jeff hollinger 11 alive